welcome to this presentation about platinum and daily platinum prices. I am going to show how I acquired this daily data on trading prices for platinum. After I acquire the data, I'm going to show how I put it into a data frame in Python. And after that, we will do some simple calculations, some descriptive statistics, and some basic charts. We do this for the purpose of showing business reasons for using Python and how it can be very powerful as we analyze data. So let's get started. There are many commodities that are traded daily in commodities markets. Some of these commodities include oil, gas, orange juice, gold, and platinum. I chose platinum because it's a lot of fun and it's not as typical in presentations. So platinum is a chemical element that's precious and it's often used for jewelry, electronics, and automobiles. Platinum futures are traded on many different exchanges including the COMEX Futures Exchange and the Tokyo Commodity Exchange. Platinum is precious and is in coins, bars, and ingots. The price of platinum, like other commodities, is more changeable than that of gold. The data for this presentation was downloaded from Quandle.com. We went and retrieved platinum prices and we used the US dollar, AM, Euro AM, Great Britain pound AM, and the same three for the PM, so the US dollar PM, the Euro PM, and the Great Britain pound PM. Here is what the data looks like when we first read it into Jupyter Notebooks. You see that we have the first few rows that are April of 1990, and then we have the last few rows here in November of 2020. So early on, we didn't have values, so those are null for Euro AM and for Euro PM and Great Britain Pound PM. But we have values for each of those here at the end of our data set. Here is my first window in Jupyter Notebooks writing Python. The first thing I'm going to do is import libraries and then I'm going to bring my data in so that it's usable. So I first import Quandle. That's a library attached specifically for this website and I have a key so that I can download it directly. Of course I didn't put it here on the screen because I don't want to display it. But this is where I would put my API key. Then I import my very common library NumPy. I import pandas and it is shortened to be pd. Then I import matplotlib.pyplot and then that will be used as plt. Here I use a pandas data frame and I get the data from Quandle. I set this whole data frame equal to the variable df because that's become sort of a standard for a variable name that has a data frame in it. So you'll see throughout this entire presentation that I'll use df and that's again referring to all the data on platinum and the daily prices and it's been read into a data frame. Here is the alternative to the previous method and in this case we are reading the data not from a website but from a CSV file. So you see right here platinum.csv and we're going to read that using this method into the variable called data frame. Now it's important to put your own path right here. So it's a little bit different if it's on an Apple computer versus a PC but the path where your file is located and then the file name has to be specified according to what's on your computer. Here we're just going to get some basic information about our data. 
Remember, df is the variable name that holds our data frame. And we use the dot info method. And so it shows that we have a date column and a US dollars and a euro and a uh, British pound, and those are all in the AM. And then it shows that we have a US dollar, euro, British pound in the PM. And these dollar amounts are all in a numeric data type. And again, the date time is of a date time data type. This part is optional, but here is how you make a comma separated value file with data out of what you have in the data frame. So assume that you got the data from a website and you wanted to save it to a file. You would do this data frame to CSV method. And we would call it platinum and we would say yes whether or not we want a header in that, meaning the column titles. Here is a simple yet productive way to return descriptive statistics about any data set. Notice that we have df, and that is the variable that I almost always call my data frame. So df.describe returns a count, a mean, a standard deviation, a minimum, the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, the 75th percentile, and the maximum dollar amount for every column in this instance. Here we have a list of more descriptive statistics and mostly just to show how to do it. So we have our data frame, we have the column called US dollars AM and this has to match up exactly to the column title and then we do the mean. So here's the mean price, then we do the median, then we do the mode. Here is the standard deviation for the data set and again it's for US dollar AM then we have the minimum and the max. So this is another way that we can see more descriptive statistics. The data in our data set is daily pricing information. What if we wanted to, instead of having daily information, we wanted to have month end? Well, here's a way to do that. We take our data frame, invoke the resample method, and M stands for month or month end. It gets the mean, which is just the average of the month that'll be in this column then. So one important thing here is your first column has to be of date, date time, and it has to be the index. And then this method works just fine. Here is how to reset the index which we need to do for some of the future actions because we are going to do some plotting charts and graphs. So we just go to data frame dot reset index and instead of the first column being the index which was date it's now just a sequential list of numbers. Here we will show how to make a simple plot or graph with our Python Platinum data. So we see that we have a date down here on the x-axis and we see this moving through here bouncing around $500 a little bit below. We see a huge spike in 2008 followed by a big drop and bouncing around to where it currently is here in 2020. Now here's the code that allows us to make the plot. We use the library matplotlib and I'll show you that and we nicknamed it PLT so PLT is that library here. So we look at our data frame, grab the US dollar PM and we're going to make it purple. Our title daily platinum closing price is here. You can also see it right here. And we gave it a size of 26. We have a Y label and we have an X label here. Because we have the date, it will be on our 
x-axis here. The reason this worked is because we reset the index to the first column, which was date. So this is what the data looks like now. Notice that we have DF right here. That's our data frame. And our first column is date. We don't have that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that default index is not there. And our index and in our first column is date. Here is our next plot, which is very similar to the last one, but I just wanted to show some variation. This time, instead of US dollars PM, I chose US dollars AM. And I changed the color to orange, and I changed the size of the plot size or the figure to 10, 10. So it's a square, and it's not super large, but we to find the size here in our code. In conclusion, this presentation showed how to acquire commodity data, in this case, platinum prices from several different exchanges. We acquired the data, and then we did some descriptive statistics and other basic statistics. We showed how to make a couple of plots in Python. And so this could be very useful as we start to do data analysis on commodities or other business pricing items. I hope you enjoyed it.